Good day everyone. We are the Group 3 and today we are going to present our info video about invasive species on land and how it affects our environment. Biogeochemical cycle. Any of the natural pathways by which essential elements of living matter are circulated. The term biogeochemical is a contraction that refers to the consideration of the bi biological, geological, and chemical aspects of each cycle. Examples are carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, hydro hydrological cycle, phosphorus cycle, and many more. Phosphorus, which cycles primarily through the terrestrial and aquatic environment, is one of the most important elements influencing growth of plants. Of plants. Phosphorus is a chemical element found on earth in numerous compound forms, such as phosphate ion located in water, soil, and sediments. The quantities of phosphorus in soil are generally small, and this often limits plant growth. That is why people often apply phosphate fertilizers on farmlands. Animals absorb phosphates by eating anim by plants or plant-eating animals. Phosphorus is an essential nutrient for animals and plants. It plays a critical role in cell development and is a co key component of mole molecules that store energy such as ATP or adenosine triphosphate, DNA, and lipids, fats, and oils. Insufficient phosphorus in the soil can result in a decreased crop yield. Next after me is Arens Lazarte and Adriel Palpalato, and they will talk about invasive species. Invasive species. Invasive species. An invasive species is a non-native imported organism that spreads or expands its range beyond its initial introduction location and has the potential to affect the environment, the economy, or human health. Invasive species also can change the food web in an ecosystem by destroying or replacing native food sources. For our first example, our first example is the European rabbit or Oryctoglagus cuniculus. It is an invasive species because uh, it is native to southern Europe and North Africa but introduced to all continents except Antarctica and Asia. Rabbits were brought over of, of, as a source of food as a way to remind people of the country they came from during colonial times. It is a problem because they reproduce very quickly. In one year, one female can have between 18 to 30 babies. They eat so much that they have pushed native plant species to the brink in certain areas. Next example. Another example is invasive species of plants in Hawaii. Leaf litter from invasive plants in Hawaii could dramatically increase nutrient cycling rates because leaf litter from invasive plants uses more nitrogen and phosphorus more rapidly compared to the native species of plants. The more this happens, different invasive plants will continue to displace the native ones since most invasive species of plants in Hawaii thrive in nutrient-rich soil. The more this happens, the more you put the native species of plants in, in danger, and it could even render them extinct. Now we are moving along to the anthropogenic effects, and I am Angelo Luis Almazan with Miss Christine Margaret is in discussing about it. First, what is anthropogenic? Scientists use the word anthropogenic in referring to environmental change caused or influenced by people, either directly or indirectly. There are four anthropogenic factors that I will be discussing about. Number one is land development. Two is overexploitation. Three is species translocation. And lastly is pollution. First, let's talk about the land development. Land development. Land use ch changes constantly occur at many scales and can have specific and cumulative effects on air and water quality, watershed function, waste generation, extent and quality of wildlife, wildlife habitat, climate, and human health. Some land development patterns particularly disperse growth such as subordination that can contribute to various environmental concerns such as increase in air pollution due to vehicle use and can only lead to formation of what we call heat islands. Next is Overexploitation or also called over harvesting. This refers to harvesting a renewable resources to the point of diminishing returns. Continued overexploitation can lead to destruction of the cold resources. The term applies to natural resources such as wildlife, wild medical plants, grazing pastures, game animals, fish, stocks, forests, and water aquifers. Third is species translocation. Translocation in wildlife conservation is the capture, transport, and release or introduction of species, habitats, or other ecological material from one location to another in contrast with reintroduction, a term that is generally used to denote, and denote the introduction into the wild 
of species from captive stock. Transpiration can be an effective management strategy and an important topic in conservation biology. But translocation are highly cost endeavor with a history of failures despite their popularity. And lastly, is the pollution. Pollution such as mining operation, fumes from paint, aerosol sprays, and other solvents, waste disposition in landfills, generating of methane gas, and military resources such as nuclear weapon production are the popular sources for air pollution. However, anthropogenic activities increasingly provoke deleterious impacts in land ecosystems, including the health of a human being. Anthropogenic impact on the environment includes changes to biophysical environment and ecosystems, biodiversity and natural resources, including global warming, environmental degradation, biodiversity loss, and ecological crisis. Global warming occurs when carbon dioxide and other air pollutant, pollutants collect in the atmosphere and absorb sunlight and solar radiation that have bound, bounds off the Earth's surface. Usually, this radiation would escape into space, but these pollutants, which can last for centuries in the atmosphere, trap the heat and cause the planet to get hotter. Next is the environmental degradation. Environmental degradation is the deterioration of the environment through the pollution of resources such as quality of air, water, and soil, the destruction of ecosystems, habitat destructions, the extinction of wildlife, and pollution. Bi biodiversity loss. The main direct cause of biodiversity loss is the land use change, which drives an estimated 30% of biodiversity decline globally. Second is overexploitation, such as overfishing, overhunting, and overharvesting for things like food, medicines, and timber, which drives around 20%. And lastly, ecological crisis. An ecological crisis occurs when changes to the environment of a species or population destabilize its continued survival. Some of the essential causes include degradation of an abiotic environmental factor, increased pressures from predation. What is epigenetics? Your genes play an important role in your health, but so do your behaviors and environment, such as what you eat and how physically active you are. Epigenetics is study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence but they can change how your body reads a DNA consequence. The primary way that epigenetics could play a role in plant invasions is by contributing to the phenotypic variation and ad adaptation of invasive plant population, which requires linking epigenetic mechanisms to the trait of invaders, their abiotic and biotic interactions, and how these are linked to the fitness advantages. Environmental influences such as person's diet and exposure to pollutants can impact the epi epigenome. Epigenetic modification can maintain from cell to cell as cells divide and in some cases can inherit through the generations. Temperature is an important epigenetic factor for both land and in water system. Rising water temperatures means less dissolved oxygen is available to fish. As a result, several fish species have experienced changes in their epigenome, two to three changes in ocean salinity and acidity. Increasing temperature on land are also resulting in epigenomic responses from, organi from, from organism, six to seven, especially for plant species, which cannot adapt to environmental stressors by changing migration patterns or behavior. Climate change has also resulted in dramatic alteration in rainfall patterns, with some regions of the world experiencing intense drought and others receiving excessive amounts of precipitation. So plants must adapt quickly to these stressors as well as food systems. Added to the food access concerns are the impact of increases in pollution that accompany climate change. Mankind is exposed to a large number of environmental influences which have an impact on epidemic mechanism. Epigenetic changes may also multiply over time and in concert trigger diseases. So that's our for epigenetic. Thank you for listening.